Hi Luke, I hope everybody else is following you over. I don't know what happened on my end, but I couldn't see a darn thing. I could, um, I appreciated everybody could see it, but I'm just going to see if I can come back out of this myself. Um, I can't see anything now on this. I can see you guys now, or at least I can see something. We are down on those who were watching. So I'm only hoping that um, we will get everybody back. All right, well, I'm up and running my end, and I do hope that other people can find me. So apologies for all of that. Uh, I don't know what happened. I turned it on, and it said, like, a huge error and it wouldn't work so um, I was absolutely trying to do it blind and, and I thought the easiest way was to just stop the stream and to start afresh so hopefully uh, all of you that were watching can come back over and uh, continue to watch we'll give it a few more minutes if that's okay with everyone just to let everybody catch up and I hope uh, people can find it um, <laughs> I'm so sorry one of those gremlins were in the woodwork and they certainly came out to play. Anyway, good evening everybody. Uh, Tenor watching, uh, which is good. Luke, hi. John, good evening to you, sir. Michael, good evening to you. James, good evening, sir. Derek, good evening. Um, I'm glad you all come over. I'm hopefully everybody else will do very soon. I'm just going to send a dear lady a... Um, Ben, good evening. I'm just going to try and give Judy a quick nudge and tell her where we are, um, if I can. Um, not always easy. Bear with me. Right, hopefully she will find that and join us. Okay, everybody. So good evening to you. A uh, little bit of a crooked start. Start. Uh, yeah, it's all okay now. Um, it just didn't go well to start with, Ben. Um, I can do the audio up. Yes, that's no problems at all. Let me just play around with that for a minute. Um, well, actually, I can't do the audio up, Ben. It's up as high as it will go. Um, I think it might be in that camera. Uh, bear with me. Daily audio be right with you. What on earth is that? All sorts of horrible things are going on. <laughs> bear with me. Um, see if I can get to the bit that we need to do. So if you've lost me for a second, I do apologize yet again. Um, I think I may have swapped cameras over, Ben. Um, I'm not too sure what the heck I've done tonight. I really don't. It's going to be one of those nights, I feel sure. It's going to be a horrible evening in some regards. What I'm going to do is do a quick swap round. I think I know what the problem is, Ben. And there was nothing worse than bad audio. So bear with me, people. Normal service, I hope, will be resumed in a matter of moments. I'm going to swap the cameras over.
you remember Ben we swapped the audio down on these cameras? Just going to have a little play here, move that over there, I can't do. Okay, so Ben, is the audio better? Forgive me joggling around this because I had it all set up one way and I've lost that, so I've got to come back in and play around. Hopefully that will be okay. And just a little adjustment on here. Okay. Oh dear, oh lord, that's a flipping worry. Okay, now then. Um, yeah, okay, I know what it was, Ben. I, I need to go back in. Do you remember we reset the audio on both cameras? I only unset it again on the one. So I need to do the other one. And I didn't realise because I've been filming down the gallery today that I swapped the cameras over inadvertently. So hopefully I now know which is which and I can play around with the other one tomorrow and get it sorted out. So we're back on track, I think. Oh dear. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me. Sorry for the little upset to start with everyone. I'm going to just get myself now into um, order. And there we go. One picture ready to go. Okay, now who have I missed and who have I got? That's definitely a gremlin in my picture has frozen. No, uh, you should be all right now, Judy. Liz, good evening. Nice to hear from you. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you stay with it. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and who else? Uh, yeah, what's going on? My picture is still frozen, Ben. We will get both camera with the same settings. Yes, I think we will get it sorted out. <laughs> right, okay, so enough time wasted already, and I do apologize, we've got a long way to go. So let's go straight in. I'm gonna put a very, very low horizon just very faintly through the picture plane on here. Now this is a wonderful Thames barge and um, this is in the third leg of the race. In fact, to the right of the picture you just, just get to see a little, um, a little bit of landfall which is the long peninsula of the Whitstable coastline uh, where this boat is tracking down to from a boy called the Old Spaniard uh, out in the estuary. Liz, you're in Liverpool. Okay. Are you up there permanently now or are you sort of just up there for a little holiday uh, with family? But good to hear from you. Um, haven't seen Wendy yet tonight. I hope she's okay. Right. Now, boats. See our horizon line. Now, look at the boat and look at its position. Start doing a lot of measuring. The back of the boat is pretty much level with the back of the horizon there. The front is somewhat higher, about so. All right. Um, now I'm just going to bend a little bit and I'm going to 
put some measurements on the boat's length. Now the length of the boat is, in my opinion, and it always usually is, whatever the length of the boat that I've drawn, my top mast should be the same length, pretty much, given a shout. Forget the pennant. I'm just going to put a little mark there. So that really is where I want that to be. I'm going to come straight the way down with a straight line. Preferably will be very, very good. And there's our mask just loosely put in. Now I'm going to come in with our shape of our boat. It does go down, but it does not seem to go down below the horizon line. We do not see water above that line. So I'm going to put that in through there like so. It's far enough back to give me a bit of room here and it's far enough forward not to be dead central but to give me a nice way that this boat is sailing into which is quite important. Uh, da -da. Yes everything seems fine now John. <laughs> uh, you've got a uh, every Okay, John, we need to sort these cameras out tomorrow, my friend, um, because that one just shouldn't be recording, but it is recording. Um, and, um, yeah, what a pain. Um, so I need to get that set up. I should have left, you know, when you, uh, you know, when everything's working fine and you know you shouldn't touch anything. And this morning I had the bright idea that, I've done pretty much everything I need to do down the gallery, cleaned everything and teaching had done for the week. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to set the camera up and do a few watercolour doodles to film them and put them out on YouTube. So I took my cameras with me. Now I'm so mixed up, I don't know which one I've got up there at all now. Um, so I've had to f record this one. In the old-fashioned way but we we need to get over that so that's another thing I need to talk to you about in the morning um, Ben if we can so back to the plot now just be level with that you've got the bow planes the the stabilizing plates that sit alongside the boat they come up a little higher at an angle and then they come down and sit like so these are dropped into the water under heavier seas or with load to keep, when this is going, to keep it stable. And just checking the front like so. I might shorten that just a little bit. And I need to put a bit more out the back. I'm looking at this, this, and the relationship from that to that. So I'm going to change the back a little longer like so and shorten the bow there i'm just going to take that off can't even find my regular eraser i've got a nice putty rubber and i can't find it i don't know i don't know what the day's happening with today i really don't anyway okay so there we go and we've got a little shape at the back which of course is the lovely rudder now how deep does this go well this plane here this plate touches the water almost so there is a good idea as to where our um, boat should be, like so. She scoops out under here and she has got a lovely shape on the bow. They do have different type shapes on the bows, depending on what type of boat she is. This is not a spitzel barge, this is just a, um, just a plain old front end. She hasn't, she's not carrying extra foremast or anything like that she has just got her two sails here and what have you now these i've said in the past are split they are split about there i think they come past each other when these open up when these you catch i'm gonna okay let me just rephrase that um i'm going hi Teresa. hi mark thanks for joining us guys um I think that um, I have lots of pictures and, and in looking for this one to paint for you guys tonight, 
I found so many I really liked and some I want to paint in oil. And it showed me also, and I'd forgotten how the split mast here tends to uh, really open up when you see the boat coming at you full tilt um, in full and heavy sail that um, how they all spread apart and you know it it distinctly does look like two masts very much so anyway that comes down about there and that's how they would look and this top section is lowered up and down depending on where it's going so there is a line down to the bow or the front of the bow there get that about right and that will give us our sail shape for the foresail nice curve there and that has got that sort of shape up to there like so and then that will wire down to there now this top one is coming again we've got a nice long line which put that lead line in first try and get that nice and straight coming down to there carefully as you can make it it starts about there has a lovely curve where it's billowing in the wind and what that will come down and into there you don't see the back end of it and then it comes out and somewhere like that and we've got a nice front set already done um, okay sorry mate uh, that dropout could have been me because my camera blacked out so if that was the case don't think it's you it is definitely down to me Right, I'm going to take that to there and allow the pennant to sit on top like so. And then we've got this lovely mast affair here. Um, this starts way down just above the deck there and goes up at, a, let's get the angle about right. So I think somewhere about there. Try and keep it straight and this is a very, very long section of timber I'd hate to think how much that weighs just that alone massive big piece of timber and that carries this mainsail uh, which goes down and drape is draping through here and we're going to have a lot of space from there to there curvature coming down soft curve something like that Let's try and get that looking about right. Now this one at the moment is draped and comes up over there and back down again. Um, but is you can see sort of everything through it. It's not all the way down to the bottom. So we'll leave that like that. And the top of it will come back through this way into there like so. And then you have the top saw. Now that is... Uh, got a small piece of timber holding it away from there and it will then come down in a lovely curve like so and then you see it disappearing between the other between the two sheets they do overlap um, sometimes it's one way sometimes it's the other but it's something like that and then you got this piece here and that part there and there's a little that's just held into there by that um, cable uh, rope and we got others holding onto here we've got several coming down here onto the side I'm not proposing to put them all in but very importantly of course we've got this one on the back end here there's a little bit of gap here and I'm still looking at to see I think that I want to put in just another few mil in my terms of the back of the boat so that I can give a little bit more gap to there doesn't want to match just a little bit okay and let's just take that out through the back again it's got a very long piece of timber here and this will come like so now I don't know why that small one, whether it aids maneuverability, I'm guessing it is. It can't do much in terms of uh, 
power the boat I can only assume that it must be something more to do with um, like an extra bit of rudder you've got the rudder on the back here which will turn the vessel but you've got this here which may be set in a such a way that it actually aids the boat now here you always have the tender there are the two little um, things here that um, hold the tender in place it's pretty much always seen at an angle like this I'm not quite sure why but whenever I see these vessels they've all got the tender on the back there so hopefully now we've pretty much got our drawing done just checking one or two things we've got the anchor on the front which we can put in not a problem um, now then yes we have done one we've done uh, actually the, the one of the very next pictures that I've done um, is the bars that we used in that um, workshop um, Judy so yeah that's cool right let's just put a few lines in and they, that actually comes there like so I'm just taking out lines that I really don't want to cause me a nuisance and there and I've got a few coming through there and there there's an awful lot in here um, but one thing I haven't allowed for really is the mast here having that lovely light brown look it's going to be a darker mask because of the pencil and the work that I've done on that there is a wonderful uh, line that runs around the edge of this vessel like so one of the other paintings I'm going to do from this race is one of the um, steamships one of the steam merchant ships that was employed during um, the D-Day uh, not D-Day, sorry, the um, when we got all the guys off the beaches at the beginning of Second World War and uh, all the little ships that went over to um, France to get all our troops back out. One of them was this uh, steam vessel, steam merchant ship, and uh, I think it's got something like Medway something, I'm not quite sure of its name. But that is always on display during this barge match each year. And I got some lovely shots of it in the estuary steaming under power. And I might actually paint that sometime. Um, that would be quite interesting. I'm just going to give an indication of a little weight behind this boat through here. To give it some idea. And this is really what is interesting me, is all this cloud form. Now what I'm going to do is all my clouds through here are, um, oh, they do vary, Ben. Uh, uh, there's no exact size. You need to look up each one. There are some that they call three-quarter barges, um, and some are full size, some are spit saw. They, they were general, but they were not completely without being individual. Um, so it just it depends on a lot this is a steel hull uh, many are some are wood some are steel this one is painted white and i'm trying desperately to think of its name uh, it's re something it's not repeter but it's re oh no i can't think if we get a bit of time towards the end i'll flick to another picture and see if i can bring it up but it's re something uh, is the name of this one. But it's the only white hull boat that I've seen. Uh, the rest all tend to be black hulls, blue linings to them. The sterns tend to be lovely blue, just like our local one, which is uh, kept at. Um, it's normally found at. Oh Lord, I'm getting too old. <laughs> I'm just losing it. My marble. I'm gonna have a drink. Maybe that'll help. If Wendy were here, she'd know exactly where it was. Um, I haven't seen Wendy tonight. Do we know where Wendy is tonight, Judy? Have you uh, heard from her at all? Right, I'm going to use a middle size mop for this. What I was saying earlier is that I need, I could quite easily do several things. I could go all the way through this with the wash of the sky. The trouble is, it's going to mess up, not so much these, because they're very dark and very rich anyway. 
this here is going to be my issue is to keep this nice white and warm when I've got all this cool color going on so that's one aspect that I've got to be careful of uh, the other way I could have done is just drawn this as I've done mask out the boat mask out this sail but then I end up with harder edges I'm never a big fan of masking so I am going to go through this and try my best to preserve that and that we'll see how we go all right for this I'm going to mix up oh, I've got a load of rubbish from earlier on so let's just use some of that let's clean that one out we don't need that one and we don't need that one we just clean those two areas out to begin with Talk amongst yourself. Dunkirk, yes, that's where we the little ships went to. Thank you very much, Wendy, for that. Uh, Judy. I remember people's names now. I think the sun's getting to me. I think I came back to teaching in the gallery too soon, Judy. I think I need another three months off just to get over things and then I'll start again. Ah. Perhaps not. Right, let's go on. Um, very big general sweeps. Now, I can come in with a superficial wash, and I'm going to use some violets in there and some of the dirt that I had, which can be a lot of Indian red can go into it too. And then we'll just play around with this. I'm going to make a second mix, similar colours, a little bit of the Indian red and a bit of the violet in there, make it a bluish colour. And I'm going to come in with a bit of ultramarine. That ultramarine's got a bit of yellow that's come off of when I was a little bit careless, mixing more paint in there. I'm going to come in there with some of that. There we go. So we've got a couple of different colour banks going on. I'm just going to come in with a generalised wash. I want to keep it very light over the top now you can see I've got a rough paper and that's fine I'm just making a very light statement and I want to dab off through the center here I'm just staining the paper away from the white but allowing most of the color to be taken back with the brush gonna bring it a little heavier through here and maybe a little bluer a little bit more blue a bit more red just play around with these color values a little bit more a little bit darker in here and just come in now I can skate I can drag this brush almost dry through some of this sky if it doesn't end up exactly the same as the photograph I really am not worried the photo is merely an indication it's an aid so the sky didn't stay this long like this for very long and, and I'm not worried if my sky changes I can drop colors in now I'm being a little bit more careful here and just coming working around that area just carefully and working away putting a little bit more red to some of that and taking it all the way through there that doesn't matter bring it all the way down I'm going to come in with this color and it does give me a setup for later on I'm being careful Going down here as well and then take that away in the same way as I was. So we get pretty much a uniform colour each side. And then we can take this all the way down to the next part. I'm going to come into here. need to protect it right up under here. And the rest of it doesn't matter until we get right down to the boat. Now any of the... Um, little bits of white taps that are needed on the boat itself on the deck or folded sail I see that on the front of this one the spinnaker sail that extra bit is folded up laying over that front line but we will um, come back into that and we can always use a little bit of um, body color just to finish that off later on I'm just gonna while I can I'm gonna put in a little bit of yellow into that mix almost neat running into that mix there down to the water take that down there and take that down to the horizon like so let that bleed and move into it okay and I'm going to work a little faster than I am because I'm going to have area especially up here going to dry up on me so I'm going to come back very very quickly now 
get some of this colour motivated moving. Come on and pick some of this up before we end up with dry edges and that will be awful. I'm going to come straight through that there because this is going to be warmer. It will not be affected. And I need to come back in here as well to pick this up. Now you might see a little mark there and that's where the paper has been not necessarily badly treated but it's caused a rub over another piece at some point and given it a little scratch. There's another one appeared just there. Very, very hard to see that sometimes when you're working or before you start to work. So it's worth noting that if you've got expensive paper like this, treat it with a bit of care and reverence when you're storing it. And at some point, of course, I have omitted to do that. So I am paying the penalty because there's a couple of little marks. It may be that I can play around and get rid of those later on so that they become superficial or even non-existent to see. Just going to bring in some more deeper colour through here. We pretty much picked up and got rid of our light through there. I'm going to enhance this up here later on. I didn't want that to happen. So I'm going to work into that very quickly. That teach me to lay the brush over the top work that all the way through because it's going to end up being an awful mess so I'm going to take that all the way off the edge work into that shape and this is when it gets pretty dangerous when you start mucking about the way that then by just being a little careless with the water and it dropped a big droplet right there and it's got opened up just want to get this done very very quickly now so I'm going to come back in take this all the way down and it will have a tap of lemon, just a little tap into the bottom part here. And I'm going to let that rest now. That could actually come into there as well. So let's take that all the way through. Because we don't need to worry, we just want to preserve our white sail. The rest is not a problem. Okay, I'm going to take that through there. Now I want to play around in this area because we actually do have a situation where I don't want to have problems with the water that I put in. Take that right the way through and I'm going to hopefully let that settle off. Here we've got some cauliflowers that are working. They can work against us, they can work for us. Um, you just got to be a little bit aware of their existence and why they actually happen. But we're overlaying some of this so we can get away with it. Just tap off some of this on the water. Now here we've got a build up and so the best way is to have a damp brush. Just take it off, clean the brush through and take that off. It will, all that paint will settle down again and come into an area that will become it will not hurt it. It's not going to hurt the painting at all. Okay, just leave it like that. Now I'm going to get the hairdryer on it. So now it's time to mute if you wish to. <laughs> it does help to plug these things in, of course. Uh, for high up to begin with so that I don't push material too far.
Uh, ben, yes you can, providing you're under colour, this is dry and you don't, so it, it really, mushrooms really happen when you get water laying too long or you get a wetter area into a less wetter area and the wetter area can still move but it's going to cause a problem uh, because it's going to be picking up the other pigment and pushing it ahead and that's why you get the mushrooms. Nine out of ten times. Otherwise, they just want to become a problem on the in their own right, unfortunately. Right, okay. Let's move on. Now, I'm going to come out with that brush, and I'm going to go into a normal round brush. Medium round brush. I think this is probably about a number eight, something of that nature. Still got a great point on it. And we're going to start looking at putting in some of the uh, cloud detail. He says he's lost the picture again. Come on. Where is it? There you go. Okay, put that out of the way. Hopefully that won't disappear again. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with some... Uh, warmer values I'm using a lot of red and a bit of the uh, maybe a little touch of indigo into that just make that a, a sort of gray I want a bit more blue not that much blue use some in here just play around with the values always if you want to have a little piece of paper to one side just test so now I want to use a fairly dry brush and I want to play around with some of these values of the cloud that are formed and moving through the picture plane and I'm scratching it across. You can see that I'm leaving bits and the water is going in some places and missing others. And I'm sort of, the brush is on its side. Be careful how much you do. You will and can quite easily destroy your brush if you're not too careful. Maybe a little bit more water to make some of it flow a bit easier. And then let that just settle down. And maybe come down in here. It's a nice value of colour. And we're going to come across here with more of it. Because it does come down. So make some more of the mix. Put some more colour together. And some more reds together. Check that out. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue into that. More water. And then just come back in and play around with that because that does go into that area and it does go all the way up to through here and take that like so and then there's a little darker bit that will come back in later on uh, I think that's fine and it's laying over so the, the thing is that you were asking Ben does it cause mushrooms no if as I say the underneath is dry it won't this is quite literally layering and that's what we're doing. We're layering upon uh, another colour. So it's almost as if we're laying colour for the first time over a white sheet of paper. Very much the same affair. Just going to soften that into that other colour. So it almost disappears. Very heavy weather. This was a really heavy day's uh, sailing, I've got to say. Doesn't look it, but it got very choppy in times. And... Um, yeah, it was a case of I was trying to paint and I was trying to photograph and neither of those two tasks were very easy when I was uh, on the on the vessel that I was on, which is not a Thames barge. I hasten to add, I've never actually been on one. I'd love to go on one and I will get on one one day. Um, but um, I always go on the um, boat belonging to one of the uh, race referees or stewards I suppose is I think what they call them now I'm putting this dark value down here uh, maybe a little too dark I'm going to lighten some of that off actually a little bit too aggressively dark but that dark will help me nicely when it comes to um, seeing that nice white sail and take that all the way down through there and it's very much the same thing again. I've got to work pretty fast through here to get that lovely dark and down this part of the sail again. 
Um, if it's encroached, it's not a problem. I can play around with that later with some body color, should I need or feel the need to. And turn that all the way through there. Like I said, if it's different to the photo, I really am not that bothered. I just want this to really work. There's a heavy sky. It's going all the way down here and through the darks. Under there, down there, once more. And this darkness through here will throw out that sail. When you want something that is light to appear lighter, you put everything around it that much darker. And it will do the job for you. Take that through there, and that's the sort of bottom of the cloud. Just fudge the edges, and if you want to soften any of them before they become hard, while they're still damp, just merge them, blend them down, scrub them away a little bit, and they will soften themselves into the background quite easily. It's harder, of course, if you wait for this to dry and then try and do it. That won't happen so well. I'm going to soften that. This is also the beauty about working with uh, good grade heavyweight paper. If you have light papers, then it will dry up so much faster and it will cause you a problem if you want to later soften those edges down. I'm predominantly just using these two colors. Um, it's got a nice blue depth down through here and I'm gonna do that in here in a moment. What I'm gonna do is add some reds to this and make it a little grayer as this comes across here and we've got another bit of cloud form that's moving through that system across the top of the sky and i think that just breaks out nicely in there i can put a little bit in there too just to break up the look and that to me is fine and i'm going to put another bit up in here Like so. Our sky is building quite nicely. I'm going to look at this side of this here, take this all the way through so that gives us that look all the way through here. Let the colour come into the sails. I'm not too worried about that because they will change anyway. A bit more blue, a little bit more cobalt blue as it comes down into this area here. Down, down, down. A bit more blue. And that softens off at the bottom as the photo is and that is a believable passage of cloud through there I hope anyway and just soften that off and let that go into nothing down to the bottom okay I'm gonna let all this dry out properly before I start putting any of the sails in so while that's all happening, I'm going to just soften this top just very gently and let that come through there into that one there. And I want to overlay a little bit of this dark in here, but I'm frightened of doing it at the moment. Uh, or shall I? This is tempting, but it could cost me. Um, no, I'm going to do it. Right. So this could be the biggest mistake of the night. I do believe it could be. We'll have to repair if we've got it wrong. So instead of waiting, which I probably should have done, I didn't. But hopefully we can get away with that. This is the area. I've got to dry it out pretty fast.
picking up the pigment and lifting it, and that's the problem. But once it's dry, of course, you, there's nothing stopping you overlaying extra layers. At the end of the day, it's your picture, and you know the sky can develop as you wish it to. So I think. I have no idea what that was. I had a lovely little message come across my phone. I'm just going to try and dry this off and prevent too much of a problem occurring. I just read your note Judy and um, yes <laughs> I am related to a lady who was apparently a notorious Thames bargee uh, in London um, need I say more um, quite the reputation I understand um, but I'm not going to name names or do anything like that Okay, I'm going to leave that now just to settle down. Hopefully we got away with that and we can, even if there are some variations in there, it's not as though it's not even in the photograph. It's just an undulation. Now I'm going to look at the water here and it's quite a beautiful green colour and that's presented to us because of the uh, skies. So I'm going to come in with a lot of lemon yellow, some cobalt and just see how that goes. I want to temper it down doesn't want to be overtly a green. I'm going to put a little bit of Venetian red to that and see what colour we get there. And I quite think that needs to be a bit icier. I'm going to come in with some um, turquoise into that. And that turquoise should give me that lovely icy green I seek. Okay, let's see how that looks. Well, I think it needs to go even further that way. So let's do that again. Now I think we're probably on that mark and I'm just going to take the C all the way through. Not worried about that loss there because of course we've got land there. So I do want though to have my C at an appropriate level which we said is about like so. I'll take that all through there and the same up the back end using my lines there. Okay. Hopefully that's it. I can't see if it is. It looks a bit straight. Keep adding, you end up with a C up here somewhere. I'm going to come in with a lot more cobalt blue. Not cobalt blue, cobalt turquoise, sorry. I put that in through there. It's got that lovely, beautiful colour to it that you get when the skies are really laden above and they're going to drop their load, as it were, and just wet everybody. I'm going to let that run right the way off and I'm afraid guys are going to have to use the hairdryer once more. Um, now it's very light up through the back here. I'm going to try and lift some of this pigment right off so that we end up with just a mere stain in the water. Take some back through here. So the pigment is there but it has stained the water and nothing more. I'm going to let that run Put almost pure water to that and let whatever pigments in there to run down and through and away. There's a little bit of light coming this way. Uh, that's got a little bit clouded because I brought the sky down a little bit too low. But I'm not, it's not too much of a worry. My main worry is if we've got a level playing field. Uh, okay mate, see you soon Jim. Uh, that's good. Don't be too long with those chores. I think you need to get somebody in to help you with those. 
Right, so that's going to set up really nicely. And uh, we're not going to do too much more at the moment to the sea, apart from dry it, of course. <laughs> I keep using the hairdryer tonight, it's one of those. to the real business and that is the Thames barge. Going down to a smaller round brush and we'll see how we get on. Very warm in here tonight. Okay so for my mixes let's get rid of some of these greens and yellows. We really don't want those at all and we don't want to dip into them by accident. Let's clean these pallets out and that will leave us nice and ready to mix our darks and our reds and our warm colours in. Okay, so for that I am going to use a lot of this lovely Indian red, Venetian red, I can never remember which one I put in there. A little bit of burnt sienna, that will take it off a little bit further. And I'm going to use it as a base layer, that's all, very simple. Um, and just put it in as a nice base layer. There is already a lot of blue in there in the paint itself, but there's also a lot of blue in the um, background too. So we're going to utilize all of that and let's be a little bit careful with our marks. We do not want to redraw the cells. We've gone to great length to get them set up as we want them. So we do need to make sure that we don't stray from that. Taking that in and let's take, this is the first layer as such. Take our drawn line down from the side of the mast, down there. And let's keep our two sails separate for the moment. So let's take that down over this one to there. And let's just fill in the surplus. Okay, one sail done for the moment and we're going to come through with the next one and that sharpens up to there and down in a nice straight line down this pole I'm breathing lightly because I don't want to make too many mistakes or any at all really Take that down and up to and underneath that other sail. Now that doesn't matter, we can see the difference between the two. And I'm going to continue on down through past the mast at this point here and let that come down where it touches. Okay. Right, so number two is done, or at least half of number two, because it's the full mainsail that comes to there. A lovely sweep round. Nice steady hand, follow your line, be very careful, don't overdo it, take it into the point. And let's come down this side of the pole so we can leave that pole. We can drop some nice colour into that later once everything around it is dry. But now we have isolated that lovely light pole that runs through there and supports this um, big sail. And it's flopping at this point and then it comes up and over and into there. Okay, let's just fill in the rest of the detail onto this. We'll come to the foresaw in a minute. But let's just get this back one in. I know most of the sail names, but I don't know what they call this small one at the back. I must try and find that out because 
it would be nice to know. And if any of you've got computers on the go and can find out while we're speaking, have a look and stick it in the comments. It would be nice to know. Okay, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in this one here. Like so. Check my drawing. My drawing line has got a little bit lost in the darkness, but there we go. I think we've got it. Comes round and bends out like so. And we don't we go past our white sail like that. Nice crisp shape. We're gonna go over it again because some of it is darker and we need to get that looking about right. We go all the way down to the point. Just gonna come and tidy up this lead edge, got a little bit off in the painting. Sharpen it up a little bit. That's it. And then come back in with the remaining paint just to get this area finished off. And then we're going to let those sails dry up. Now, be a different story with these sails. And I might do another barge picture, maybe in oil or something later on, where we've got a lot of sunlight in the sails. And it then shows how vastly different these sails take on beautiful colours when the sun is on them. But part of the charm of these is the colour of the uh, dye and the ochres that they use in these sails um, to create them. Of course, they're not this colour when they're made. They are dyed this colour and maintained this colour. So there we go. Okay, so we have our set of sails in and uh, we're going to make them uh, carry on in a minute. Now then, your sea level is, is it reference picture, which is wonky? Um, no, it's not wonky. Uh, yes, the, the the reference is wonky. Um, that's the that's the photographer. I think we had a word with him and threw him overboard, Ben. Um, thank you, Mizzen. All right, that's great. That's fantastic to know. Thank you very much. Um, yes, we threw the photographer overboard because of taking wonky pictures like this. So hopefully, if this is straight, I'm happy with that. Right, now I'm going to start looking at the boat itself. And it is white, yes it's white, but it's not white at all. There's lovely greens here reflected in the back of the uh, boat, so I'm going to stick that in. And we're going to darken it up a little bit. And I'm going all the way through that little boat there, and I'm going to take that down to nothing. Because um, it just dissipates into the white of the boat. But it's got that lovely little flush of green. And I'm going to put a little tap of the red from the sails in there as well. Just to give that a little bit of a deeper recess there. Can maybe come back with a bit more of the green. Just taking the green and the red together. Because they are opposing each other in terms of the um, colour wheel and the um, complementaries. So they will annihilate, annihilate each other. <laughs> They will, oh, what's that? Uh, is it a gaff rig? No, it's not. Um, I don't think. I say not, Judy. You could be absolutely spot on. I don't know. I don't know enough about them. I wish I knew so much more, but I don't. Um, now that's quite a bit darker. I'm going to put a bit of the green and that same sort of mix together again on here and put that in as the lovely rudder there you go and I'm going to bring that colour green through places here on the bow coming forward so it's white as I said but it is not white it's really a dirty white and I'll put that through into there let that dry out and we're going to put some rust on there as well and I want to put the darkness of the uh, buoyancy thing on the side all right it's quite dark quite black so let's put that in it's larger it goes up at the top and almost hits the water line but then it gets quite a light rusty color 
because that's always in the water on the water line. Okay. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. Um, how are we doing for time? Just done an hour. We're actually doing very, very well for time tonight. I want to give this a little uh, warm colour. Now, I've got a very corrupted orange. I'm going to clean that out for a second. Get rid of that paper. Get another piece of paper. And we are going to just put a little bit of orange, just a tint, just a minute little flash of orange, and warm up this white sail. I quite like that. I'm going to leave it at that for a moment and let that just settle down, I think. Yeah, I'm tempted to put a bit more of a flash in at the top. Because, of course, don't forget all our colours do dry a lot lighter than uh, the colour we put in when it's wet. So if you want something really to be dark, then you need to make it a lot darker to start with. And just working some of those areas where it just crept in over that light. So we're gonna that hopefully that will hold. And it's got a little bit of a darkish, a little bit of cad red up on top of the pennant up here. Stick that in. And I'm just looking around now. I think we've got a lovely teal blue colour. So I'm gonna use that that lovely uh, cobalt teal colour that we've got. I want to put a bit of dark to it so it's not going to remain totally that colour. I just want to pop in our little tender. Now this is, of course it's a life raft if something should happen to the boat, but it's also the primary little vehicle that once these are, if these are anchored offshore then they will use this to get to shore at the end of every day has his boat the sails on the to right with the way with the way Paul has his boat the sails left to right top bottom mizzen pennant topsail mainsail staysail jib and foresail there you go Ben you're a wonder mate you're a walking encyclopedia and I appreciate the effort thank you mate I'm going to let that settle down and I'm going to carry on with the rest of this now. This water is dry and I'm going to use some of this colour that I was just using just to suggest a few marks in the sea. So it's very much the same family of colour but we're just giving a few watery ripply marks uh, in the sea. Obviously they're very together and very distant ray right up here. I don't want to put too much into them at this point but becoming suggestive and of course we want to put in a slightly stronger one which will denote the um, weight on the boat a little bit along the side and I'm going to leave that there because that's almost like a little reflection I'm just going to put one or two marks back up in here I'm letting my finger drag along the paper very gently it's just a guide so I do not come down on this paper too hard at any one or given moment. So now I'm going to come in with a few more definite marks and not the same as the painting in the photograph. I am not going to try and do every subtle little change in shape. I just want to put in very general little taps of colour that suggest little wavelets before the waters become windier and heavier. And as this comes up and as the uh, rain threatened, um, so the winds will come up later on, and uh, it got quite nasty. But it wasn't that bad, I've got to admit, until later. 
And when we come back ashore after the race, it was awesome because um, the I've never seen such dark brooding clouds with sun on the exposed muds and banks of the estuary um, and on the boats that were um, moored up by this time. It was an awesome sight to see. Um, I will um, try and paint one of them one day because it's really, really nice just to sit there. Even though very soon after the rains did fall, it did change things. We did have to run for cover, but the best of the day had been had, so it wasn't a big deal. Right, so I'm just going to come in here with a few stronger marks. One or two taps more. I'm coming in with a few of the other ones as well. So I'm going to go back in, change the colour down a, a gear, go back to somewhere where we were. little jots, little taps. I'm not even looking at the reference. <laughs> I say I looked up at it then. But I'm really looking at the reference. I'm just trying to um, sort of get an idea of the flow of the water. I'm coming with a few darker ones. Okay, I'm probably going to leave the water there, so I'm just going to overdo it and overcook it. And I think that's probably more than I've already done. So that'll be fine. All right, so now I do want to put some more marks, sort of rusty type marks, into the uh, boat itself. So there's a little sort of rust line runs along here. Right, so catching under the top of the boat there. And these will serve us well because they will really punch against the blues and the colours we've got working everywhere else. And I could consider it just a little too orange maybe. So it's going to come in with a, using some of that red just to temper it in one or two places. But I don't want to lose the orange at all. Just make sure the marks you put in are up and down and not off to one side. They are running the shape of the boat and no nowhere else okay and up around the front there around where the anchor is let's put the anchor in like so and one or two coming back this way top up through to the back and there's a little bit of color up there I'm not quite sure what that is at the top but we're going to use it up through right there so we're getting a nice little shape to this vessel all right and I'm going to put a little bit of light orange just to the top of there just eat into that a little bit it won't let me so we'll not worry too much a bit of light up into here. Take that all the way down through there. And then try and put some into this. And this one here, of course. There we go. Going to darken that up in places in a moment, but we'll carry on. Uh, jib. 
pass on that one, Ben. Pass. I will start doing some more research, I think, just to keep up with you, chat. And I really will. Okay, I'm going to come in with a really strong um, red um, and the blue, but I'm using a very deep. Uh, I want to put some cad red into that too. I want it quite opaque. I'm quite happy using uh, other reds that are not opaque, they are transparent. But when it comes to this solid colour, it's nice to get a real uh, dark red going on. And using that red with um, our um, cadmium red, which is an opaque colour, of course, so that will do the job for us. Now's the time to really tighten up any colour that we want to. Put a little bit of pleat if we can see any. It's very hard in this photo to see any of that happening. And a bit more of that red, I think. It's hard to see any pleating going on and therefore any shadow, but I'm going to try and suggest some of it. So that's coming down over the top there. Doing a little bit of blend here. Just lift some of that colour up and back into the bulk of the sail, like so. Let that pull into there. But let that dry because it's over this one and I want to work on this one now. So that's that part and uh, bear with me, have a quick look. Use the same colour mix into the four sail. And if I'm saying them correctly now, Ben, I'm not too sure. It's very dark across that sound. Now you see how all of a sudden that colour really kicks that one out. And that's what I was hoping to do. So I've been very, very dark, very, very strong coming across here into this sound. There's very little to see in terms of variation of colour. I'm going to put a bit of orange, a bit of red into there. Touch more blue. And it's a little bit too on the dark side. Let's come in with some more red straight into that. There you go. We can keep that up to there. Come in this side, take it all the way down, and that red is punching against that violet sky, and you can certainly see how. That sky in there was quite dark, but now it's actually reversed and become quite light because we've made all of the sail around it that much darker. There you go. Now I'm going to come into the bottom half of here and hopefully the top will be dry enough to take it without losing anything. I want this dark under here because this sheet is over this one and therefore it's creating a darker shadow at this point. And then this will come down, 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 down to there. And there's very little tonal variation that we can see. So we're going to come down through here. And that will further liven up this nice pole. Which I'm going to leave as is. I'm not actually going to do any more to that, I don't think. I'll look at it, but I really don't think it needs it. Now let's come back in here. And do this bottom section. Again, being careful, we do not lose our pole. I want to put more cad red as we come down this one. A lot more cad red into this shape because it's got a lot more light hitting its cover, uh, hitting the covering, like so. It makes it a lot more interesting too. Beautiful. I'm just going to come back up into this one before it totally dries up on me. Let's give that a little bit more red into that part. Hopefully that shouldn't cause a problem. If it does, I'll just have to go over the whole thing one more time. 
in that part. Hopefully we'll get away with that. Okay. That's good. I'm happy with that. Um, where are we? Got to do this one now. Last one. Put more red into that again. A bit more blue. Let's come back into this area. Deepen this one down. Now this thing says is called the mizzen. Which I'm glad to know. I want to give that a little bit more curvature out. I wasn't quite curved enough. I'm going to put that to there. Give it a little bit more of a lovely shape. Like so. Gently does it. Okay. So there's our mizzen. And um, it's actually got possibility for a little bit more of a lighter top edge. So I'm going to try just to break that out a little bit higher. Slightly better angle. Being very careful and just redrawing this top edge a little bit more. And that's just allow me to put a little bit of light into the top. Just catching the top of that sail, which I can see. I'm going to leave that as is now. Um, where are we? Uh, we're not far off in many respects. Um, I'm looking at it and, you know, I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking that uh, we're going to struggle to make an hour and a half tonight, people. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to start looking at this sail. And it's got a deeper edge, but it is also not automatically uh, orangey colored. So let's just look at some of these colors. Don't go too heavy too fast. Just want to come in very, very gently, does it, as we come down into this area. It's quite almost a pinkish red color because it's reflecting light from these sails onto the white. So let's just take that on put it in let that go around like so and then we're going to come in with just a subtle violet and a bit of that cobalt blue just a tap it's cooling off in here and i want to suggest that as it's on the turn of the sheet so that's coming down and giving me that lovely light and dark here which is throwing the light of the mast out. And that comes all the way down into there. Like so. And it gets quite warm and reddish again on this here. Picking up a little bit of that as it comes into there. That's a little too dark, so we're going to use the water we're going to flush the colour out, let that come down to that point like that, as it should do, into that area there. And I've got a wonderful transition of pink, dark, and almost pinky orange as that comes into that turn. I'm going to let that dry up because there is a very, very faint set of lines. I'm going to come in with a bit of dark up through there. The edge of this is quite dark. I'm going to put that in. And that actually helps me with that really horrible line of blue that was up there. I'm going to let that settle down. A little bit of dark on there, on the lead edge of the sheet. And on the top, it gets quite dark as it goes up into there. So for that, I'm going to use some indigo, a bit of the red to it. Just make enough material to do the job with up into the rope comes down and into top of the sail. So, all right, a little bit heavy, but you know, we'll live with that. We can't do too much with that. We've only got certain size of brush. Very, very hard sometimes to get the very fine marks that we seek. And I'm gonna put a little bit of depth into the top there, down into that part, and into the top of this part here. Okay, 
Okay. Now there are some very, very fine marks and for that I've really got a point on my brush and all they are is the stitch marks of the sail as it's bare and round. You can barely see them. They are, in honesty, too dark. You can barely make them out. So I'm going to be very careful if I can just to suggest one or two of them on this. That's a very, very faint, very faint indeed. Use some of this sort of colour here just to reinforce a couple of the um, ropes that are coming down like so and into there. Um, and there are one or two others over the place. We can go back in and follow our little pencil line up for that one. And down from this one. Little black dark top. There's actually an orange pole. I'll put some I'll suggest that in there and a little dark top to it and there is some rope that is I've seen this a lot um, I'm going with a little bit of dark and we've got a weighted rope around here now the, the rope comes down and hangs away that is really too much of a line if I'm honest I can't it's hard to stop that. And a little bit of line, a little bit of line up through there. Um, there's a gentleman sitting on the back of the boat dressed in red, so we're going to put him in. Just going to start putting one or two figures in. And um, there's a little bit of dark texture around him. I'm just going to come in with a few random colours of darks and lights just in here quite what they are it could be another person I have no idea something there on the edge of the boat just put in one or two bits of furniture as it were on this vessel um, now there is several other lines that are coming down and meeting the cleat here and we take that back to there okay and one or two other bits and pieces on the deck. I don't make out much at all, but I'm just going to put in one or two bits and pieces that I can see definitely, especially around here. There's a bit of dark, little bits of stuff going on, and that comes very, very low down there. And uh, where are we? Um, touch of red in that pennant. Which will be nice. Just a hint of red. Now I'm going to start using some white gouache. And I want to try to get a bit of orange on the into it. And just see how I can just clean up the front edge of this sail. If it will allow me. ever so subtly lightening the front edge. Now, as I say, um, it's really only a lot of modern watercolorists that sort of do the, this pure thing about no body color. Uh, indeed, if you go back to the um, Victorian painters, they used a lot of body color they mixed many of their other pigments with whites and created a big series of body color just try and lose that if i can a little bit okay but it will cool it that's the thing about gouache it will cool now i'm going to use some gouache um, out on the pan and tap in a little bit of lemon to that a bit more would good I don't want to put too much onto the paint because it will make paints when I don't want them it will make them even more opaque so I'll be a bit careful I'm just going to wipe that off later 
There we go, we've got a nice little lemonish colour. Hopefully that will go against my white boat here. And will give me those lovely light areas on the boat that I've lost. There's that little white bit of spinnaker mask, a spinnaker sail that's sitting up there ready to be used at the right time. Put a little bit of white in there, just a bit of reflection on that bow, and a little bit of white through the back here, will not hurt, just to lift up that little line, I don't know what they call that part, but whatever it is, just to lighten it up there, and a little bit of the back, a little bit of a white bit on that chappy there, and then we've got the boat uh, things, I do, I should know the name of those too, I think, and a couple of bits of the rigging are showing up, very light, I'm going to just suggest something like that, and just drag it away, and I put a bit of orangey colour in that white, and just come to the very top of this pole, just started to catch a little bit of light through there, I'm going to bring that in, like that, a little bit of the same going on in that part of the mast there, a couple of lines that are running down, a little bit of light in the bottom of the mast here, a bit more orange that would help, <laughs> a little bit dried up on me, there we go, we reignite that orange a bit more. Now that is there any more? I'm sure there's going to be a little bit more. I'm just going to tuck in a couple of little bit of things on the rigging through here and down through it there just to help with the realism of it. Just checking over, there's a little bit of line coming across there and then one or two. Uh, we haven't got that. You see this mast through here, but well, there's actually a smaller one that runs down through there on that one, which I actually haven't put in. So we've done that, so that's good. I think we're done. I really do. I think that if I keep messing around with any more, I'm going to go backwards. And I don't really want to do that. I put a stronger bit of orange in there, which works. And in there and I think I want to put a little bit more orange in here but I don't want to make it so obvious so I'm going to put in a little bit of a wash and just blend it away with some water just give that a little bit more warmth there I like that that works um, Right, now this is my reference picture, it's fixed to pole, projecting out from the bow. Um, yeah, that's the split you were looking at. Some boats are fitted with them, some are not. It's a pole that is sitting back here and then is pulled out and comes out through here. Sometimes and often they actually lay down at a funny angle this way. You think they would go out like a narwhal uh, tusk, but they actually come straight and therefore look as though they're pointing down or level. Um, and that's the sprit, and that's a very different barge because it's rigged and sails a little bit differently because it can carry extra sail um, as a result of that. Um, but I'm not quite sure all the dynamics, and I'm not a sailor, um, so 
I wouldn't even begin to start thinking about how that would all work. Right, okay, so after our shaky start with everything, I think we're pretty much there. What is not in, of course, is that little bit of land, which we're going to put in now. A little bit of blue violet, a little bit of ultramarine violet in there. Just going to suggest that through there as that goes up. Leave a little white line to the sea, it doesn't matter at all. And that just gives us the um, coastline and gives it a reference point that we can tell where we're at. Okay, so with that all said and done, I think the painting's complete. I'm just going to have a quick look while I sign it and do all the usual stuff. I'm going to put the signature, I'm going to put it down here tonight, I think. There we are, so it's signed, and um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. Um, I wasn't sure about the sky for a second, but I think we got away with the sky. I'm just going to peel back the paper, because I do like this part of the reveal, and um, let's see how we go. And when you do peel this sort of uh, tape off of the paper, make sure your paper at the point is dry, or else it will rip the paper. Um, I've done it myself before, I've been a little bit too eager to um, take the paper off before the, the washes and that around the edges are dry enough to do so, and it's cost me. Um, it will tear into the paper surface, and often or not, it will. Oh, I'll get this off in a minute. Yeah. And often or not, it will uh, destroy the, the painting. Um, but be aware. And the other thing is that I found that when I put this same tape onto cheaper paper, it tears into that when it's only been on there a little while, uh, which is quite a worry, really. Um, at least this paper uh, has uh, a bit more grunt to it and doesn't tear off the surface as easily. It can do if it's left on too long, but it... it if you're careful, it's fine. Get this top piece off, I'd be really happy. Good lord. Oh, that's right, it's been bent all the way around the back. There we are. There we go. One. Um, Painting. Let's just take that back a little bit. Uh, if I can do that, I think I can. There we are. One Thames barge. Halfway through the barge match a few years ago, uh, on its way to the Whitsville area, before it will then turn back up the. Uh, what it does, it goes out to the Spaniard Boy, and then it takes a right-hand turn back towards uh, Whitstable, which this one has just crossed round the past the Spaniard Boy, and it's on that next leg. And then they go all the way down to inshore, and then they track all the way back up to the finish line, which is back at the start, of course, uh, up in the uh, estuary, uh, just outside of Oar Creek. Um, so yeah, that's um, it. Yes, the bowsprit barge, which this is not a bowsprit. This is just um, whatever the other ones are called, but it's not a bowsprit. Um, I really enjoy this subject matter. Uh, I've painted many barges in different guises over the years, and actually I've looked at the um, reference that I've got for all those trips that I've done, and there are many more paintings that you guys will probably see over the coming months, um, I hope. Uh, I wanted to do an oil one on um, 
Monday, but my wife said that I shouldn't, shouldn't keep throwing barges down your throat. You'll soon get fed up with seeing them. So maybe we'll paint another one um, another time, but we'll do it in oil. And uh, I've got a real, well, I've got so many. I just really love the subject. And I've, I, I rarely, I don't think I've got any barge pictures left. I think I've pretty much sold every barge picture I've ever painted. Maybe one or two kicking around that I've forgotten. But uh, the majority of them find homes very quickly. It's a very emotive subject, a, um, a Thames sailing barge. Um, and I've said it before, I know I have, but you know, they were crewed by a man and a boy and maybe the gentleman's wife was on board to do the food and cooking and one thing and another. But invariably it was a, 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 a father and son affair and maybe the, the dog as well got involved and um, yeah. But now of course with technologies as they are, with insurance rates as they are, um, then they do need a complement of crew to run these and uh, yeah, why not? I mean, it gives many more people a chance to enjoy sailing them. And uh, yeah, um, I'll never get tired of them. I think of them, uh, and I think most people would probably agree with this, but I think of them as the spitfire of the sea. To me, they are as iconic a shape and form on the um, in the estuaries and on the tidal, inshore tidal ways of our country on the east coast um, as a spitfire would have been seen in the sky. They cut the same uh, sort of uh, mark and they, they, um, they stir up the same romantic feelings inside us. And uh, yeah, I have the same feeling for a spitfire as I do for a hurricane, as I do for a Thames sailing barge. And um, some of its lesser brothers as well that are gaffrig uh, gaff sailors and all the rest of it and the inshore fishing vessels from different coastal waters uh, including of course the foul boats uh, down in Falmouth uh, the Falmouth working boat I painted loads of those uh, in more recent years love them too especially they race them all the time and they're often seen in and out of St Moors and out of uh, Falmouth and yeah they're just wonderful to see those too um luke thank you very much mate i'm glad you enjoyed this one and uh, james i think i saw you had a bit of fun with this and enjoyed it uh thank you for that and Teresa, lovely uh, very quick tonight like to see went paint flat see and it was very boring you've made it interesting well i made it a little more interesting i mean it was a flat boring sea to be quite honest there wasn't a lot going on with it it was just a beautiful coloured teal green and um, icy coloured and uh, it's part of the beauty that made the redness in the sails just that much more beautiful to see against it so yeah it worked I'm quite happy with it um, and I'm glad you've enjoyed it and I hope you've got something from it I've no idea what I'm going to be uh, painting um, on Monday. I, I'm thinking that also for the, um, I'm not going to be doing a live stream for the patrons this week. Um, it just doesn't seem to be working out. So I'm going to use that time that I would have been streaming to paint something um, and put that out as a film for you instead so that you get to see it that way um, so that's what I'm going to be doing on Sunday evening and not going to be streaming most likely but stay tuned because if I do change my mind on that I will put something up on the Patreon page on Facebook so that you can actually see what's going to happen if I'm going to do it ahead of time but the next stream for YouTube will be an oil and it will be on uh, Monday. Um, yeah, okay, Jim, thanks very much. Man. I'm sorry you missed the ending. Uh, you just do need to get a maid in to do those chores, mate, so that you don't have to do them. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I do love painting them. Uh, and it might be that um, I might even do that steamer. I don't know. 
Um, so you may get another boat on Monday if I can. Um, if it's not going to bore the heck out of you guys. <laughs> but you might do, I don't know. But we'll see. Evelyn, thank you very much. I'm sorry for the shaky start, everybody. Uh, I, I really panicked for a minute because I was looking, I could see on my, I have my iPad that is seeing exactly what you guys are seeing. So I could see myself on there and I was working and it was working. I was seeing the chat going. I could see people joining the stream. But I couldn't see anything in the uh, the the panel that is really important for me to know what's going on. And what it said was that it wasn't playing back. So I was worried that this wasn't going to record properly. It may have streamed, but it may not have recorded it properly on YouTube. So therefore, it may not have had a sort of a Dave affair. You may not have been able to see the reruns on Dave, as it were. Um, so that's why I stopped it and I felt that that was the best thing to do. I think it was the right thing to do, but it just caused a little bit of chaos with people at the beginning. But I'm glad everybody uh, found me again. And yeah, so with that said, if anybody is interested, don't forget that I put on a new video every um, Friday anyway. So the one today went up this morning. And it was a second video, well, not a second video as such, but the first one I've done as a YouTube video on pastel pencils. I know we streamed the Kingfisher last time. This one is a little landscape uh, in pastel pencils, so that's worth looking at. It's uh, just over or just under an hour, a little bit long for YouTube, but hopefully people are enjoying that. And don't forget also, if you do like any of these videos, whether you go back on these, any of my streams and watch any of the videos themselves, then always put a like. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. The word subscribe, I think, is a very poor word anyway. It should be called something else because it infers people have to pay. But it's not. It's absolutely free. But by clicking on the subscribe button, when you get notified when I put a new video up, but it also helps me grow my channel. And that to me is very, very important. Um, so that will be great. And if you want more, take a look at my Patreon. Uh, you'll find any way that if you're going to have a go at this um, Thames Bars, that tomorrow I will put up the reference photo on my Patreon. So even if you're not a patron of mine, you're more than welcome to go there and download that for use as a teaching aid for yourself not for commercial uses just as a teaching aid and to that end you can um, use it but while you're there if you like the patron uh, please join please get involved because being a patron uh, does cost you a few pennies i think it's about a coffee a month or a cup of coffees a month uh, it's paid in dollars it's five or ten dollars a month whatever you want to do but with that token in mind, you know you're helping me help, uh, allows me to, all the materials I'm constantly using, all the uh, electronics and the storage devices, all these things to make this all happen for you guys week in, week out, and on the Patreon. It, all the money I get from my Patreon goes to help towards paying for that. So... If any of you do want to get involved with that, please take a look at it. It costs you nothing to look, and if you want to get involved, you can come in on whatever level you fancy. And with all that punching away and promo and selling things out the way, I'm going to say goodnight to everybody. Uh, I've enjoyed your company, as I always do. Thank you for supporting me and the efforts that I'm creating on my channel. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon on Monday. For an oil it could be a thames barge <laughs> it could be another boat or it could be something completely different until monday you're not well you might know sunday night if you look on the channel and see what it's pre previewed at but yeah um i'm gonna look forward to seeing you monday james that'll be fantastic uh, don't get lost whatever happens and bring tons of bits down as well and i'm i'm all ready to go with the printer mate um so, well i'm not all ready to go i will be ready to go when you've had a look at it and tell me what i've got to do anyway people 
thank you thank you thank you so much for a, a wonderful evening again and and your support is absolutely precious um yeah take care judy see you monday my lovely and glad you got around to seeing us again um and i gotta find out now what happened to wendy and um, it's most unlike her not to be on here so there we go all right everybody um, I'm going to leave the chat up for a couple of minutes and let everybody say goodbye to each other and then I'll shut it down and see you all soon, see you all next week and if I don't, have it, stay safe, happy painting if you're painters if you're trained people, happily modelling, let those trains whisk around without a problem and stay safe, stay safe, stay healthy, talk to you all soon catch you all Monday at 7 o'clock, GMT, bye for now people, bye bye I got that, Judy. <laughs>